I love The Lord of the Rings, and it's really hard for me to believe that the first movie by Peter Jackson is going to be 20 years old this year. I mean, I was only 11 when that one first came out, and it was my introduction to Middle Earth. And it was also a movie that would ensure that I would remain a virgin for a very, very long time. I recently listened to The Silmarillion on audiobook at my day job just because that's the kind of nerd that I am, and it put me in the mood for more Tolkien stuff. The world of video games has been really good to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I mean, the games that came out alongside the movies were really fun back in the day, and the newer games have been pretty cool too. But the game I decided to play was Lord of the Rings Aragorn's Quest. This was released in 2010 on every platform that was available at the time, and I played the PS2 version. And again, this was released in 2010, so not only was the PS3 out, but the PS3 Slim was out. And if you enjoy this video, please make sure that you let me know by giving it a thumbs up and tell me about it in the comments down below. That sort of thing really helps me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I upload every other Saturday. Follow me on Twitter. And now let's get into it. Aragorn's quest begins with a quick tutorial in Mordor showing you how combat works and the basics of level progression. Then Aragorn squares up against Sauron in an epic 1v1 match. An event that never happened in any of Tolkien's work anywhere ever, only to have it be revealed that this is all happening in the imagination of Sam's children as they're playing. And seeing as how they're getting everything wrong, Sam decides that he should tell them about his adventures with Aragorn. So basically all you're doing in this game is playing through the movie trilogy as Aragorn with weird graphics. The art style of this game is one of the first things that stood out to me. Everyone looks like they've been morphed into cheap dollar store versions of themselves. I mean, look at what they did to Gandalf. Look at Gandalf. He's beautiful. And even with how stylized everything is, it's pretty obvious that this is intended to be in the same universe as the Peter Jackson movies. The game looks and plays very much like a Diablo 2 clone. Gameplay is focused on exploration, finding items to upgrade your stats, and leveling up. You get an ability point every time that you level up, which can be used to upgrade your special abilities. Although, after a while, I found that the healing ability is the only one that you really need. Combat is focused more on timing and blocking rather than using your special abilities. If you block an enemy at just the right time, you'll parry them, which will stun them for a brief moment. And then you can just spam your quick attack until they die. Luckily, the enemies usually make it really obvious when they're about to attack, so this is pretty easy to get down. And this also renders the combo system totally pointless. Your stats seem to be pretty much unaffected by your level and are determined entirely by what gear you're wearing. This means that a lot of combat is pointless, so I completely ran past a few groups of enemies because this combat gets pretty repetitive after a while. Although as you progress through the levels, more and more enemies will start to block your path, which will force you to go through the motions of combat. Each level is about 20 to 30 minutes long with plenty of checkpoints, so the overall experience isn't very hard at all. In the levels, you'll occasionally find some journal entries that contain some of Aragorn's backstory that they didn't bother going into in the movies. Each level also has some quests that need to be completed to open up new pathways, and these don't have a whole lot of variety. It's usually something along the lines of find the runes to open up the path, or you have to find some kind of key or other item to open up some sort of gate. These quests are the only real changes to the narrative. They actually did a pretty good job of following the movies. The first real level is at Weathertop, and then we play through the rest of Fellowship going through Caradhras, Moria, and Naaman Hen, and then we go through the two towers in Helm's Deep, and play through the Return of the King with the Paths of the Dead, Minas Tirith, Pelennor Fields, and we finish things up at the Black Gate. And I really appreciate that they went through so much effort to follow the movies. And that feels like the only effort that they put into this game. This has to be the cheapest cash grab of the entire Lord of the Rings IP. In this version of the game, the only character with a real voice is Sam. Although, Aragorn gets one spoken line of dialogue in the final cutscene. You bow to no one. But I'm pretty sure that Sean Astin is voicing Sam, so that's pretty cool. Some years back. Master Frodo and I, and a couple of rascals you know as Merry and Pippin, had undertaken a most dangerous quest. 
Sauron's ring rates had discovered the whereabouts of the One Ring, and we embarked on a mission to take it from the Shire. Pretty much every other character exists entirely as just a portrait with text boxes. Frodo does have an in-game model that appears in Name and Hen, but it disappears as soon as the game no longer needs it. In the same level, we also see a model of Boromir, but really, he might as well just be a part of the background. Many parts in the movies that were very intense, serious, or even scary are rendered completely hilarious with just how shitty the production quality is. The Watcher of Moria sounds just wrong. <laughs> The Balrog in Moria sounds like a human made the sound effect. The Horn of Helm Hammerhand sounds like a squeaky fart. This troll sounds like a pig having an orgasm when it dies. And then just watch Gothmog's death scene. Aside from the main story, there is also an arena mode, which is just a survival mode where you have to fight off wave after wave of enemies. Although surviving each wave of enemies isn't enough to clear a level in arena mode. Each level also has a set of challenges that have to be completed while you fight off the enemies. And I only bothered playing the first level of arena mode because I just didn't like this mode very much. I found the combat to be way too repetitive to really care about a mode that's focused entirely on combat. I would be lying if I said that I didn't have fun playing this game because I had a lot of fun with it. It gets all the right things wrong and all the wrong things right. Now this was a multi-platform release so there is a version of it on pretty much every console that was available in 2010 and the PS3 version is advertised as being compatible with PlayStation Move. And I've never had PlayStation Move, but I wish that I had it now, because there is no way that that was any better than what I played for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let me know about it in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here, I upload every other Saturday. Follow me on Twitter, and I hope to see you next time.